Hey, what's up? Serpentine here, taking a look at the action RPG Victor Vran, developed by Hamamont Games, who are the same developers behind the city building Tropico series. Victor Vran has you playing as a sort of Van Helsing like character called, well, Victor Vran, a monster hunter of sorts that has come to a kingdom to help out with their current monster problems. The game plays as you'd expect an action RPG to play, but it does have a couple of unique mechanics. First off is the ability to jump, something that isn't really seen in the genre. Victor Vran takes it a step further by adding wall jumping as well. However, although it's introduced early on in the tutorial, the mechanic itself hasn't really been implemented into the core gameplay, finding it only in secret areas of the map where it could have really shined as a main game feature. Secondly, instead of having your abilities tied into a skill tree, your four main abilities are dictated by the type of weapons you are currently using. You also have a special, almost ultimate-like skill called Demon Power that are obtained from loot drops and certain shopkeepers. The RPG elements of the game are somewhat lacking with no skill trees, leveling only really unlocking more slots for items on your character, and only five stats to keep track of that are only really changeable with combined weapon stats. The game has you completing area-based quests for various rewards like gold, experience, or loot drops. The quests involve things like eliminating hordes of enemies, activating environmental objects, and defeating bosses, with some being more challenge mode-esque, like killing a certain mob with only melee. The actual staging of the game has you making your way through the kingdom grounds, clearing the way to dungeon entrances. The dungeons are pretty standard with a couple of mini bosses scattered throughout and a final main boss fight usually set in an arena like room. One thing that is a little disappointing is the absence of any puzzle solving elements, a place where the double jump mechanics could thrive and would also prove to break up the repetitive hack and slash nature of the game. The main boss fights manage to do this to some extent as strategies need to be formulated and employed against each boss differently but I would definitely like to see some sort of puzzle solving in the game. On the weapon side of things, we have melee and range types with five different weapons available at the moment, including swords, hammers, rapiers, shotguns, and the latest edition of lightning guns. Three more weapon types are planned to be added to the game as shown on the game's roadmap, along with legendary weapons that will have added unique particle effects to them and be extremely rare to find in game. Each of these weapons play vastly different, with rapiers being extremely fast, with finesse abilities tied to them, and hammers being slow, heavy hitters with massive AoE abilities. With no class system in the game, nor any skill trees, you are restricted to using your weapon skill set, of which there are two for every different weapon type, allowing for 14 different weapon skills to play around with once the game is officially released. You can have two weapons equipped at any given time, plus two demon powers, giving you a total of six abilities at your disposal at any one time, while hacking and slashing your way through the game. These abilities don't work off any sort of mana system, rather they are just on relatively short cooldowns, while the demon power abilities work on a sort of rage build-up meter and have greater effects than other abilities. The enemies you face are pretty stock standard for the genre, with skeletons, spiders, necromancers, and elementals. There are some species difference though with ice and poison spiders as well as mage and barbarian skeletons, which require different gameplay approaches. Mini bosses will usually be more powerful golden glowing versions of their standard form with no additional abilities or perks to them. The bosses however are quite different and will have special abilities that you have to work around and will take considerably longer to take them down than even the mini bosses. Additional features to the game include difficulty modifiers which can be applied whenever you like to challenge yourself even further. Currently there is a selection of six different modifiers that change the game in ways like enemies dealing more damage or your character's health slowly ticking away all the time. Multiplayer will be feature of the game, however it is still in development and was currently unavailable at the time of playing. Altogether, Victor Vran is an action RPG that takes on a more simplistic feel with no class system and limited abilities. However, the abilities and weapons that are available all feel unique and cater to different playstyles. I do still think that the jumping mechanic could be better implemented to break up the hack and slash gameplay along with more puzzles in the game. If you're looking for an action RPG that's a little bit more laid back compared to other titles like Diablo 3 or Path of Exile, 
Victor Vran may be something that interests you. Anyway, that's been my player preview for Victor Vran. The game will be officially releasing near the end of May. If you want to find out more about the game, check out the links below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.